So about a week ago, DJI released the updated DJI Fly app, which is the app you're gonna use if you're flying the Mavic Mini, the Mavic Mini 2, or the Mavic Air 2. And in one of my previous videos, when I talked about the most recent firmware on the Mini 2, there's a little bit of a confusion. Some people are saying, hey, I'm not able to see those new features on the Mini 2. How come I can't see the 60 frames a second at 2.7 or I'm not able to see that zoom function? And the main reason why people aren't seeing that is because they did not update their Fly app to the latest version, which is the version 1.2.2. Now for me, I'm also on the iOS version. Now I know normally the iOS will come out before the Android version. So make sure you guys check to see if the Android version updates have been applied to the latest app. If not, just wait for that next version to come out. And I also got a bunch of comments on the Air 2 saying, hey, you know, I did the app update. Now what has changed on the Air 2? Now the Air 2 actually has its own separate update and I'm gonna do a video on that next. So in this video, I do wanna focus a little bit more on the updates on the app, which is actually is a pretty significant update as far as what you're seeing on screen. This is the version 1.2.2. So let's go through that in this video. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, Skillshare. And for those that aren't familiar with Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning community that really focuses on the creative arts. So if you're looking at getting into videography, photography, illustration, Skillshare has thousands of classes to choose from. Now over the past year, I've taken a bunch of courses, everything from branding to communication to how to vlog better. There's a lot of courses on there that just really help you level up certain aspects of your creative field. And for those that don't know, I'm actually a UI UX designer by day. So there's a bunch of courses on that that I've been taking last year. Everything from user personas, strategy, and also as far as the software goes, I've been using Sketch for a while now, but I've been looking at that transition over into something like Figma. So I did take a bunch of Figma courses on Skillshare. And of course, the great thing about online learning with Skillshare is that everything is online, so you are able to take it at your own pace. So if you are looking at leveling up one of your creative skills or wanted to add a new skill to your tool set, make sure you guys check out those links down below. And thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first 1,000 people to use a link down below in the video description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And now, back to the video. So let's go through what's new on the Fly app version 1.2.2. So I'll quickly read them off here as far as the release notes on the new version and then of course we'll go through in more detail about each one of them. So first thing we have here is the attitude indicator which a lot of people might just be calling the compass orientation on the Fly app. Next we have add flight tips which you're able to view interesting aerial photography tips and scenarios such as firmware updates taking hyperlapse shots and when the aircraft is returning home. Now that's the thing that kind of confuses people when you talk about hyperlapse shots that's actually geared more for the Air 2. So a lot of people are saying, how come I'm not getting all those new features on the minis? And the next thing we have here is the addition of supported functions for the customizable button, which is this button right here. They've now added gimbal follow and FPV, camera settings and exposure lock and unlock. So in this video, we will be focusing on the app update that's connected to the Mini 2 right now. And the Mini 2's firmware update should be on the most recent one as well, 01.02.0100. So make sure that you have the most recent DJI Flight app as well as the firmware updated on your Mini 2. Now, if you are wondering why I have the Smart Controller and the Mavic 2 Pro out here, it's mainly because of that update as far as that attitude indicator on the new Fly app. Now, if you've flown before with some of the older DJI products, the reason why I bring this up is because this attitude indicator isn't really anything new. It was actually brought over from the DJI Go 4 app. And for those that aren't familiar with the 4 app, it's really just a more, I would say, more robust application that was initially used and still is used on the Mavic lineups, the old Mavic Pro, as well as the Phantom. So if you haven't flown those and the Mini is your first one, then this is gonna be completely new to you, of course, or it just will be a, a new update. But if you've flown some of the older ones, this indicator has actually been on the Go 4 app for the past couple years now. So it's not anything too new, but it's really nice that they brought a lot of these features over from the 4 app now into the DJI Fly app. Now to best demonstrate how that attitude indicator or compass, however you wanna call it, on that bottom left of the screen works, what I wanna do is show you a couple things here in the studio first before we take it outside mainly because if I talk about it while I'm out there, you might not understand exactly the orientation or what it's actually doing in the air. Now we are all connected here with the Mini 2. It is connected to the Fly app right now. And as you can see on the bottom left of the screen, we do have that attitude indicator, which 
As you see, my drone is pointed forward, so you see that blue arrow is pointed in that direction. As I turn my drone around, you can now see that it is moving that indicator around. You can see where north is, so if my drone is pointed this way and I turn, it's now pointed north. Now before this update actually happened, if you're familiar with where the position of that compass attitude indicator was, it was right there in the middle, but a lot of people just were confused about it because like I said, it was a stripped down version of it that they put into the Fly app compared to what was on the Go 4 app. Those two lines really help understand how the drone is positioned in the air based on the horizon. So as you can see here, I'm holding the drone up straight and now you can see those two lines are straight. If I turn my drone this way, you can now see the lines turn this way when I'm rolling. And if I roll right, you can see that it is changing direction as well. Now, this is important because of the fact that if you are at a high altitude or somewhere that is very windy and you can't necessarily see your drone, if you see that your indicator is turning this way or turning this way or turning back, you'll know that it's more likely fighting some sort of wind up in the air that you might not necessarily see. Now, if I'm going forward, so if I'm going full throttle on my right stick moving forward, you'll see it now will go forward. And then if your drone is pulling back, you'll see that those lines go all the way back. But at least now you can see the difference here of what those two lines are. And I kind of think of those two lines as like your, your arms here, just how it's positioned, which way it's positioned, now I will go into more detail on that attitude indicator later in the video because I need to take this outside and show you some of the differences on how you're able to spot the home point. Now the next thing they added in the app is flight tips. So which is pretty cool because tips are always a good thing to have and what they do is they show you some aerial photography tips while you're waiting, while you're doing a firmware update or while you're checking out some new functions. These little tips will come up and of course if you don't want to see them anymore you can just hit dismiss or don't show me again. But it's nice that they added some of these aerial photography videography tips in the app as you're browsing through it. Now the next update that they added were some new features to the function button right here. So if you didn't know, there's a function button that you can customize. You can either single tap or double tap depending on what you want that function to do. Now the first one is recenter gimbal and I'll just do it on single tap. So if you want to recenter gimbal, say for instance, you scrolled up and down, you just wanna be able to recenter it. As you can see right here, the gimbal is pointed forward and then I just click it once, it'll now point down and back up, click it, points back down, click it again, back up. Next we have toggle, map, and live view. Now what's interesting about this one is that if you do have the compass on, so at the very bottom left, you'll see that the attitude indicator compass is on the bottom left hand side. Now if you click that, it actually does not work. So it does not function the way you would think it functions. You actually have to be in that mode, which is the map view mode first which you click down here at the bottom and now switch it to map view. Now, if it's in map view at the very bottom, you are able to click it and it'll switch from live view. So live view is basically what the camera sees. And then you have the map view, which is that map there. So if you wanted to switch what the camera sees with the map, you can now do that by pressing that function button there and switches and there you go. Now it switches out. Next one we have here is advanced camera settings and I'm actually happy that they did change this one because it makes it a lot easier for you to get into those more, I would say more manual settings that you might wanna change when you're up in the air so you don't have to go to the menu, go to camera and go to camera settings. So if you do use that one and you tap it once, it will now already bring you to that camera tab that's in your menu system. So if you wanted to change things like, you know, add the histogram on your screen, add the overexposure warning, turn grids on and off, you're able to quickly get to that tab now just by setting that function button on that option. Now, last one we have here is auto exposure lock and unlock, and this is actually a really good one as well. So it's really good if you wanted to shoot, like I said, sunrise, sunsets, or anything that you're facing and have a lot of sunlight in, and you don't want that fluctuation of your screen going from really bright to really dark. If you wanna lock that exposure in, you can now set that function button there to lock it, and that way you don't have that big change in exposure. All right, so now that we're up in the air, I wanna get a little more detail on that attitude indicator like I talked about earlier. So on the very bottom left, as you can see, 
Too bad you can't enlarge it, that'd be really nice. But at the very bottom left, you see that blue triangle. That is the position of your drone. Right now it is pointed north, so you can still see that indicator for north, which is right there. So my drone right now is pointed north. Now another indicator, as you can see here, is that home point. Now I actually set my home point right about over there. Now there's another blue circle. Now the blue circle is actually the orientation of you and the remote control. So if you can see at the very bottom corner, you can see that little arrow. Now as I turn around, you can see the orientation of that arrow also change. So let's fly this away just a little bit, just so you can get a better understanding of where the home point shows up on the map, as well as where you are on the indicator as well. So let's get this over there. Now the home point, which is right over here, is right behind the drone. Now this is a really good way, and I talked about this in previous videos, of how to work your way back home, especially if you lose orientation of the drone. What you wanna do now is very similar to what you would normally do if you were to pull up the maps, is just look at that home point, look which way the drone is pointing, and turn your drone around, just like that. And then now all you have to do with your right stick is just go forward, and then fly back to that home point. There you go. And then click on the map, and then you can see here where the home point is. Let me fly this back just a little bit. You can see exactly what is happening here. And now you can see in relation to where the drone is and your home point and where the remote control is, which is me. This is what I would normally do when I'm flying back home, but now that they have that new indicator on the bottom left-hand corner, I don't have to necessarily go into map view like this. I can just close this out, go back here, and then now I can see where my drone is and which way it's pointing and then work my way back home. And there it is guys, the updates on the new DJI Fly App version 1.2.2. And also if you guys got value from this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Also don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. And of course, thanks to our sponsor Skillshare. Make sure you guys use those links down below in the video description to get your free trial of Skillshare premium membership. Thanks again for watching everyone. This is Aldrin Estacio with flightpath.com. I'll see you guys next video. Take care.